Hello everyone, that's tuning into today's 10 to 14 day video update. So day 10 is going to take us to the 23rd of January and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the SHFS St. ECM Ensembles. Maybe once around a couple of weeks, we'll have a look at CFS B2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into the first half of February and I should get time back for you in a moment. Just say there was a 6M forecast uh, this morning. There was a live stream last night, so sorry about that. Everyone was a little bit unwell uh, yesterday and still not thinking that 100 percent today actually you can probably see uh the eyes properly flared up and i had my grade and you know just about really off color so took yesterday off although he did manage to uh, release uh, a six and four guys yesterday and the first spring update as well no, there was content yesterday, but, um, uh, you know, I didn't get to do live stream, so I'm really sorry uh, about that. So hopefully we'll be live on Wednesday. Anyway, please like, share, and subscribe on this video. Thanks so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. We only put around 20 subscribers to get 19.4K, by the way, so could give us a sub. That'd be absolutely awesome. I'm going to get this video done as quick as I can and then get offline and rest my eyes. Right, let's start off with central England temperature. So, uh, the CT is now down to one4 that is 2.4 degrees below 61 diet 90 average. And I think 3.3 degrees um, below the 91 to 2020 average. So really cold first 12 days of uh, January there. We will start seeing the CT coming back up uh, from now onwards. I don't think it'll be a dramatic rise though. So... I would imagine by this time next week, we'll probably be back into the freeze, but still quite chilly. And then where we go in sort of the last week to 10 days, of that, that will determine um, whether we come out below or below average or above average or average for uh, this January. But a very cold 12 first days uh, to the month. So, um, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature as for London, starting off above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. However, it's not quite that straightforward as we're under high pressure. Certainly down in the south, there could be some chilly uh, nights still to come as well through the course of this week. Um, and then we go off into the more extended range. And we find that the upper air temperatures return close to average. However, that does mask a lot of scatter. So the white line should be on some means returning close to long-term average. However, we've got cold on some members down here, milder on some members up there. So the last week or so of January, that's still open to quite a bit of the uh, of the speculation. You know, it looks like it's all to play for. We've got dry weather over the next week, ten days, and then more unsettled into the last week or so of January as well. Haven't got the temperature anomalies today, so uh, we'll move straight on to the uh, latest grip of that from Earth, uh, showing that would we'll change the wind direction and it would turn the wind round to a southwesterly today. Therefore, the temperatures are coming up and we are lifting out of the freak surf that we was in last week. Right, let's start going through the chart data then. This is how the latest UK met Euro run, looking for a uh, midnight on Thursday, high pressure dominating the weather. Bring a lot of fine weather into the weekend. We find a little bit more unsettled Scotland, I but mostly dry under high pressure for England and Wales. And then, as we get to the end of the UK, make your run lower pressure starts edging in from the Atlantic, perhaps bringing uh, slightly more unsettled conditions there by the start of next week. ICOM again with high pressure in control through to the weekend, then lower pressure gradually starting to edge in when we get to the beginning of next week, perhaps with a little less conviction mode compared to uh, the UK Met. KMA is looking like that. So again, high pressure dominates the weather up to uh, the weekend, then starts to slip away uh, next week. But soon comes back in, actually, and this time trying to reach the Scandinavia. So check this out. The KMA begins do -do -do, by 25th of January to start switching the wind around to an east. There's a pool of cold air that's sitting to our east as well. Let's have a look at the upper air temperatures. Um, oh, there you see it. Some cold air sitting just to the east of the KMA. About to unleash the beast there. Uh, well, it is, but it's a long way out. It's uh, 288 hours away. But uh, if you want an instant, you want a cold final week to January, um, that looks pretty interesting, pretty exciting. The last 10, 14 day that we did on Saturday 
There were hints within that of the Scandinavian high and easy winds in the last week or so of January. It looks like those hints are still there within some of the model output. Let's move on to the GFS midnight run. Again, high pressure dominating the weather on Thursday, still in control for Friday and into the weekend as well. The high pressure gradually slipping over towards the east side of your plan, low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic, starting to turn uh, rather more unsettled through the beginning of uh, next week. Only a bit wet and windy there by day 10. That's uh, Thursday, the 23rd of January. Quite a deep blow in the Atlantic and fairly strong southerly winds as well. Now, look at this in the extended range. The GFS Big Dike Run also building up a Scandinavian high, albeit we keep the energy coming in from the Atlantic. But the GFS Big Dike Run is not all that far away from uh, getting a Scandinavian high. Well, it does get a Scandinavian high together, but not that far away from getting the wind into the east as it is, though. We keep low pressure coming from off the Atlantic. I think we definitely need to keep a close eye on this uh, last week of January for the coal potentially to come back, but this time not from the north, from uh, the east. And that's the important difference because it does change the distribution of possible snow for northerly brought uh, distributed snow particularly to northern areas and like western areas and around eastern coast but an easterly would distribute, uh, distribute snow much more to the south and to the east so um, you know it's just a bit of speculation at the moment but we need to keep a close eye on this last week of January uh, but Jeff S uh, 6 said by comparison again a lot of dry weather up to the weekend and the high pressure edges away early next week allowing low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic that's the setup with GFS 6Z at day 10. Again, it's looking uh, really quite unsettled there with the strong winds and rain out into the west. Again, we see this high pressure started to build up over Scandinavia as we go into the last week of the January. It's a long way off. It's 25th of January. It's 300 hours away. But, you know, quite consistent within model output to attempt to build a Scandinavian high anyway. The question is whether that scaddy high will be strong enough if it builds to uh, block off the Atlantic. This GFS 6 z run keeping low pressure coming from off the Atlantic, but much closer with this 6 z run compared to the midnight run in, uh, in a Scandinavian high taking over. Um, so we see a deceleration of the low pressures. Weather system probably getting so close. That could be a very wet pattern, uh, by the way. Might bring a lot of heavy rain. And uh, as we get towards the end of the GFS 6 z run, again, we find that the Atlantic is just showing signs of backing up as his, uh, the heights continue to rise to the north and the east. That chart is a little bit poised, I have to say, to um, potentially get the wind into the east there. All the focus on the last week of January then. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Make sure you everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gars Weather. Get them to subscribe too. And thank you so much everyone for doing that. And once again, very sorry you know, for not being able to do the live stream uh, last night. And not having a 6am broadcast this morning as well. Uh, right, okay, GM. Again, high pressure building up from the south on Thursday um, and dominating to Friday and the weekend as well. This is a very mild path for the northwest southern east. There could be uh, a little bit of frost uh, by night and morning and whatnot. Now, in the extended range, the GEM also tries to get Scandi together, but to be honest, much weaker compared to the other model output up to day 10 with that. I'm still keeping a ridge going down in the south, so the GEM very much keeping the energy coming in from the Atlantic. And then what about the ECM? Well, again, we've got high pressure dominating over and to the south and the east potentially on Thursday into uh, the weekend again low pressure starts to take over for me Atlantic but not convincingly so even out to day 10 uh, the uh, ECM looks uh, relatively stable for the south east it does start to turn wet and windier out to the northwest so much more unsettled in the extended range with the ECM but also building up this high pressure in Scandinavia and a big cold pool sitting uh, just to our east as well so again the uh, ECM it has these hints of height rises to the north and to the northeast there into the last week of January. That's how we end up. Is that going to set up a Scandinavian high and bring the wind around to the east? <laughs> it does look quite poor, so watch this space. This is how the GFS 12 said yesterday. Was like, I would have live streamed this, I suppose, if I was live, although not the extended part, because that doesn't come out for an hour or so after the main operational um, run. But check out what the 12Z ECM did. 
went even further with that Scandinavian high and eventually really took over with that Scandinavian high as far as it goes is 360 hours and uh, well that's uh, very very poised to start unleashing the beast check out that coal pool that's sitting there across uh, eastern parts of europe just waiting to flood westwards on those uh, easterly winds very very interesting he to l z run uh, in the extended last night it may come to nothing this you know but the hints are there but we've got to keep a close eye on the last week of january this is a precipitation forecast based on this morning's ecm midnight run uh, from Twitter.com, lots and lots of dry weather to come over the uh, next few days. Just a little bit more unsettled, maybe, in the north and west by day 10. Start to turn a bit wet and windy then. That's a long way off, though. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for day 10. For me, Icelandic Met Office gets us to the 23rd of January. 19 members of the ECM Ensembles have been very unsettled with low pressure coming in from the off Atlantic mile, wet and windy. 17 with high pressure. Over into the east of the country, low pressure out in the Atlantic. That we bring in a gentle sort of continental flow. Could be some frost and fog. About 15 with high pressure up towards Scandinavia. Trying to get wind into uh, the east there. That includes the control and the operational road. In two weeks time... If it will flip over, is it going to flip over? Well, bah, 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 bah. There we go. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It will get us to the 28th of January. 19 members of the East Seven on the case of let battle commence. High pressure, uh, Scandinavia, low pressure in the Atlantic. That could be bringing cold air from the east and from the southeast. We've got 16 low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, and a mild southwesterly flow. And we've got another 16 with uh, low pressure coming in. From off the Atlantic as well. CFS week two finally means a 500 millibar high tone is broken down into week beers. The first week beer takes from the 13th to the 19th of January. The next week dominated by high pressure, mostly dry and milder than last week. Week two is the 20th, 26th of January. High pressure trying to get going towards Scandinavia, low pressure out in the Atlantic. Not trying to bring up a mild southerly wind, but that could back southeasterly and be quite cold. However, no easterly, no Scandinavian high. Week three is the 27th of January. Second of February, then low pressure is back in from off the Atlantic with those southwest winds bring plenty of wet and windy weather. And that goes on into week four as well. The third to the ninth of February kinks it mild with the CFS, low pressure up here, high pressure down there, and winds remaining from the west. So the CFS not interested. In a Scandinavian high, but then again, last week's cold weather was not predicted by the CFS until the, until the final moment, um, just before it started. So the CFS will always have to be dragged to uh, colder weather, of, of course. So let's just wait and see. The easterly and Scandinavian high probably won't come off, but the hints are there, and so as a result, we need to keep a close eye on what's happening that last week of January. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's us know what think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc., etc., etc. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gazbos. Get to subscribe to you. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, tomorrow, hopefully, as long as I'm all right, we'll have a 6 m broadcast. EC uh, extended, but Europe and a 10 to 14 day as well. I'm going to be offline, though, for the rest of this afternoon. Definitely resting my uh, poorly eyes and head. Um, but you have a great rest of your um, Monday and we'll see you soon with more. Uh, thanks for watching.